Well, there's always a lot of uh, debate between Titans fans and Texans fans as to who should get to wear Oilers throwbacks and celebrate the Oilers. Maybe you can set the record straight on that, but which team and which city do the Oilers belong to right now? I'd have to say here. I'd have to say um, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, that's where our legacy went. Um, like uh, like Curly was saying, it doesn't matter where you are, we're still all connected. And um, I'm just glad that, uh, that Amy kind of reached out to, to all the former Oilers players and, and gave them a, a place that they can call home now. Because for a long time, especially guys who only played for the Oilers, really didn't have a place that they could call home. Really, they could have a place where they could come back for an alumni weekend or come back and, and uh, you know watch the team practice or whatever. But she's done that now by reaching out, not only this year, but the last couple of years. We've had some functions in Houston, and now she's actually brought everybody here to Nashville. And uh, I'm sure all these guys are very, very grateful about it, especially the guys who never played for another organization but the Oilers. What do you think about this, how closely you watch this team, Warren, and what do you think about what they, Mike Brabel and the team has been able to do here? Well, I, I watched them very closely because I, I watched the teams that I, I played for or were associated with the, the closest throughout the league. And I was at the game last week and was very torn because I, I worked for the Seahawks for 15 years. I played for them for a couple of years, and uh, I know a lot about this organization as well. So it was a game where I think I was more impressed with, with – the Titans, because of the way they were able to come back, I think everybody kind of expected that the Seahawks would play well in the game and they, they were probably going to win the game at home. But the way the uh, the Titans came back in that football game was really impressive and uh, to go and win it in overtime was huge. So uh, it, it was, a, it was a, a really entertaining football game. Uh, all the all the big players in that game, Russell Wilson and 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 uh, everybody else made the plays that they needed to make. But in the end, it was the Titans that came out with the victory. Warren, when you were running the run and shoot, it was sort of revolutionary at the time. When you watch the NFL today, how much do you see run and shoot concepts around the league now? I see it everywhere. And, and uh, I, I talk to a lot of coaches because I've been in the broadcast business. So, you know, the things that they're doing today are the same concepts that we ran back in, in the 19, 1990. Um, you see the back shoulder fade throws that they, they throw. You see uh, all the adjust adjustable routes that they make in the route combinations. All those things we were doing way back when where everybody thought that was kind of a gimmick. So uh, I'd have to say we were, uh, we were ahead of our time. I think the biggest difference between today's football and what we were doing is we played with only wide receivers where we didn't have a tight end on our roster. These tight ends today now, a lot of them, like the George Kittles and the Kelseys and those guys, they're like hybrid wide receivers. They can play tight end, they can come and get next to the tackle and, and block, but they can also split them out in the slot, put them out wide, and use them like a wide receiver. So I think that's the biggest difference. Otherwise, teams are running the same type of pass combinations. When you look at these rules changes and how it's so much geared towards the offense, that run and shoot, you think you could have thrown for, for 5,000, 6,000? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely five, you know, because. I did that a couple of times close, but the game has just changed. It's a quarterback receiver game today, and and you look at if you don't throw for four thousand yards now, it, it's it's considered you know a down season. Where back when I played, if you threw for four thousand, it was considered a big year. So um, that's where the game has changed. Even though Tennessee is a little bit different because they have a Derrick Henry who can run for two thousand yards, but there's not a lot of those guys out there in the league. So uh, they take advantage of what they have personnel-wise, with having a guy like him. Otherwise, you would be you know, knocking yourself in the head if you didn't use him the, the right way. But most teams around the league are going to throw the football all around the lot. A few former Titans that are up for the, the Hall of Fame again this year. And I wonder if you could kind of talk about maybe Steve McNair and, and Eddie George in particular and whether you think good cases might be able to made, be made for them. Yeah, I've been uh, saying that for the last couple of years, especially with Steve. You know, I, I thought Steve uh, considered – was considered uh, or should have had more consideration up until now. Uh, that guy was a warrior. You know, he, he was uh, a really tough physical football player. He was an uh, MVP of the league. He took a team to the Super Bowl, uh, very well respected around the league. So I think he's a guy that, that definitely deserves uh, strong consideration for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'm the only African-American in there right now, and I'd like to have maybe another buddy in there because <laughs> I took a team picture this year with about 14, 15 of us, and, I stick out a lot in that picture. <laughs> Talking about? Yes, yeah. sir. Hey, what do you think about the quarterback here uh, now in Tannehill? I really like that he's found a home for himself. You know, things didn't work out well for him in Miami. Um, Ultra-talented player, 
very versatile as a quarterback. You know, had some injury problems in Miami that 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 didn't help, and, and not a very good football team. But they've really found, and he's found his niche here, and they're using him the right way with the play action pass, getting him out on the move some. The guy has great athleticism for for the quarterback position as well. He can use his legs and make things happen, and very very accurate with the football. So he's the perfect quarterback for this offense, and I think that's one of the reasons why you see this offense uh, do so well. You mentioned the atmosphere in Seattle when the Astrodome was full. What was it like playing there? Man, it was a it was a uh, really tough place for the opponent to come in and play. It, it got really really loud in there, um, and, it, and it really added juice to our football team, especially our defense. And you know, during those early days when Jerry Glanville was there, he he named it the House of Pain, which I didn't like a lot because other teams came in and tried to say we've got our House of Pain too, and they usually tried to put that on me. But um, our defense especially played well uh, in that environment. Offensively, you know, you wanted to be quiet when you have the football, but but definitely defensively that place could get really rowdy. Living in your neck of the woods where you are now, I wonder if you ever run into uh, to Jake Locker or, or if you've seen him over the years? I have now? not. I know he moved up north back where, he, where, he, uh, where he's from. I think it's called Ferndale. And uh, he's probably doing some ministry stuff and things like that, but uh, it's, it's too bad that uh, his career was so short. Um, because he was a really good guy, really good athlete, but it just didn't work out for him. So he's probably doing what's best for him right now, and um, as long as he's happy, that's all That's all I really care about. What, 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 talk about how uh, you guys, the former Oilers, are connected in some way. Why is it important that all of you are connected to this franchise and what it's become now, and how often do you watch the Titans and you pay much attention? I watch the Titans a lot. But I just watch football. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gym rat when it comes to football. I watch it all. College, I watch CFL, I watch everything. So uh, that part of it for me is easy. You, and you definitely want to watch the good football teams. And the Titans have been a really good football team here for the last you know, five or six years. So, uh, and, and it's gone even further than that back when Steve and all those guys were here. Um, and then because of my, um, my connection to the organization, it makes you want to watch even more. And, and I think it's important, like I said earlier, that that the guys who played for the Oilers and the guys who only played for the Oilers have somewhere to call home now. And uh, Amy has made that possible by bringing everybody in. And I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of these guys that i played with over the years because uh, I haven't seen a lot of them in a long time. And uh, it's going to be really good to just to have all these guys together and, and they can feel like this is home, even though none of us really ever played here. But it still will feel like home because you have somebody that really cares about you. There's a lot of it. Blood after a move, you know, guys from Baltimore with the Colts and things yeah. like that. Why do you think this is different where the Oilers have embraced what the franchise is now? You know, it's really hard to say. I think you'd have to ask, you know, a lot of players that I'm sure everybody's going to have their differences of opinion. Like every guy isn't coming here. There's some guys that, that aren't coming. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why some guys aren't coming. Some has to do with COVID, some has to do with health reasons. Uh, so, but I think for the guys who are coming, the, the 70 or 80 guys that, that have said they're coming, it, it means something to them, you know, and, and, and uh, they loved playing for the organization. Does it mean it was always perfect when they were there? No, but it, no organization is perfect. Every guy has contract problems or whatever it might be or the way he was released or all those things uh, play into it. But after a period of time, it's, it's how long can you stay bitter about things? You know, when you really, what it really boils down to is, was my experience there good? Did I have good relationships with the guys that are there? Because that's the thing you miss the most when you when you leave the game. You miss your relationships with your teammates in that. And, and I think a lot of these guys are looking forward to seeing a lot of these guys they haven't seen in a long time, and being able to you know just have a great time together. How much do, you, do you remember maybe Amy from when you played for her father's team, and how do you think she's maybe evolved as an owner? And what's your relationship like with her? To tell you the truth, I don't remember much about her when I was there. I think she kind of stayed, you know, in the background. Um, but I've gotten to know Amy really well over the last probably seven or eight years. Uh, we're on the the board of the Pro Football Hall of Fame together, so we got a chance to know each other there. And and she's reached out to me, a, you know, a few times over the years to to uh, come to different functions or whatever it might be. So uh, I just love what she's doing, and I love that she has the heart to do it. Um, that she cares and um, she understands that 
the legacy of the of the organization is important as well. Not just what's happening here in in Tennessee, but this legacy goes all the way back to when the Houston Oilers first started, and she understands the importance of that because all of my records uh, in passing or whatever are here in, in Nashville. And so that's all part of that legacy. So she's just reaching back and bringing everybody in so we can all be one big happy family.